Well, it looks like 2020 is off to a great start. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. I'm just with you. 2020 is already the worst. The sky in Australia is blood red thanks to a climate crisis. Republicans are trying to rig the impeachment trial, and the president is threatening war crimes on Twitter. We're less than a week into 2020. The world is like your friend who tells you this is the year he's going to quit drugs and take up yoga, and then on January 6th, you see him trying to sell his mat for crack. <laughs> I mean, we should have at least been able to come together and enjoy the Patriots getting knocked out of the playoffs <laughs> in the first round at home. I mean, finally, Bill Belichick was as sad as his outfit. <laughs> For a guy who's supposed to be good at clock management, he always looks like he woke up five minutes before game time. <laughs> and yet, we couldn't even take 24 hours to savor that small victory because the president spent the weekend threatening war crimes against Iran after ordering the assassination of a top Iranian general, and then, in Orwellian fashion, claiming he did it to stop a war. Breaking news this morning, the U.S. has carried out the assassination of a top Iranian military and intelligence commander. The president ordered this. It was carried out by drone last night in Iraq. His name was Qasem Soleimani. He was Iran's top military commander. I went to a State Department briefing today, a background briefing, and the officials basically said, the ball's in Iran's court, and we are trying to de-escalate. Actually, one official said, this was an act of de-escalation. We took action last night to stop a war. We did not take action to start a war. Trump thinks we can't accuse him of rushing into a war if he reads his teleprompter super slowly. <laughs> you can't just kill a top general of a sovereign nation and call it de-escalation. That's like getting drunk and driving your car into a Kmart and then telling the cops, I did it to stop my car. Trump and his allies are lying in the exact same ways the Bush administration lied us into a catastrophic war in Iraq nearly 17 years ago, and the exact same people are doing it. After the attack, Fox News decided to turn to their stable of lumpy white guys who've been wrong about everything, <laughs> like Lindsey Graham, a champion of the Iraq war, and former Bush officials and serial liars Ari Fleischer and Karl Rove. Why are these the best experts we can get? This is like doing a segment on organizing music festivals and interviewing Billy McFarlane and Ja Rule. <laughs> and the same people are trotting out the same lies they did 17 years ago. For example, Vice President Mike Pence lied and tried to link Soleimani to 9-11 in a tweet that was not supported by the evidence. And if that sounds familiar to you, it's because it's right out of the playbook of George W. Bush and Donald Rumsfeld, who repeatedly links Saddam Hussein to al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups without providing any evidence. The reason I keep insisting that uh, there was a relationship between Iraq and Saddam and al-Qaeda, because there was a relationship between Iraq and al-Qaeda. There are reports that there is no evidence of a direct link between Baghdad and some of these terrorist organizations. Reports that say there's that, that, that something hasn't happened are always interesting to me because, as we know, there are known knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns. The ones we don't know, we don't know. Excuse me, but is this an unknown unknown? I'm not several unknowns, and I'm, I'm just wondering I'm not this going, is an unknown I'm not going to say which it is. Well, you're not going to say, so it's unknown whether it's an unknown unknown. But one known that we do know is what Trump knows, which is a known unknown, because he unknows what he doesn't know, meaning we know he knows no knowns. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing that we found a way to elect people who think these guys had the right idea. It's like if 17 years from now, someone made a movie called Cats 2, this time with genitals. <laughs> so Pence lied, just like Bush and Rumsfeld lied. But hey, at least this isn't the first time Mike Pence has been wrong about a disastrous war in the Middle East. I am here to report, as the United States military confirmed in Iraq on Monday, weapons of mass destruction have been found in Iraq. It's fitting that 16 years later, Pence is telling the same lies because 16 years later, he looks the exact same. I mean, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's just a stock photo businessman come to life. When he takes off his shirt, it says Getty Images across his chest. <laughs> 
So the Trump administration tried to link Soleimani to 9-11. They also claimed they were stopping an imminent threat. But if that's true, they haven't presented any evidence of that threat to Congress or the public. In fact, a New York Times reporter tweeted that the evidence for such a threat was razor thin. And the Times also wrote that national security experts and even other officials at the Pentagon said they were unaware of anything drastically new about Iranian behavior in recent weeks. But that's not good enough for Fox and Friends host Ainsley Earhart, who said today that we just have to trust the intelligence agencies. So interesting that people are critical of the president's decisions, of our intelligence community's decisions, our general's decisions. They want details. General Tata said, well, they can't have it. They can't, everything can't be made public. We heard Pompeo over the weekend saying, everything that we have, the intelligence community has, he said, I ran the CIA at one point. We can't release everything. We can't release all of our intelligence information. We'll release as much as we can, but you just have to trust us, basically. Oh, we just have to trust them? I'm sorry, but I'm not inclined to trust an administration that lies about everything, even the dumbest things. Let's not forget, this is the same guy who literally drew a circle on an official weather map <laughs> in Sharpie to claim that Alabama was going to get hit by a hurricane and then pretended he had no idea how it got there. <laughs> Can you imagine if Trump actually tries to present some evidence against Iran? I have it right here, the top secret intelligence briefing that proves I was right. It says, Iran bad, right there. <laughs> Right there. So there you go. You heard Fox and Friends, we have to trust our intelligence agencies. I wonder, though, if she felt the same way back in May when the intelligence agencies were investigating Trump. What? No, she didn't. Oh, and the next clip proves it. Oh, well, why are you telling me? You ruined the surprise. All right, well, let's just show it anyway. There was a Fox News poll. And folks were asked how likely intelligence agencies like the FBI broke the law to investigate President Trump. Look at that. 58% said extremely, very, or somewhat. And only 31% said not at all. So and that you get just that shows number you, you add up the first three. That's pretty scary that we can't trust the FBI. What? <laughs> we can't, but that lady on the news just a second ago said we can. <laughs> Wait a second. Oh, my God, one of two things is happening here. Either Trump supporters are self-serving hypocrites who defend intelligence agencies when they want to bomb other countries but attack them when they investigate the president's crimes, or Ainsley Earhart has an evil twin. <laughs> now, if you're a Trump supporter out there, claiming anyone who opposes this act of war is siding with the enemy. Let's just remember, this is the same president who literally said he and Kim Jong-un, a brutal dictator who starves and tortures his own people, quote, fell in love because of Kim's beautiful letters. <laughs> Trump actually said that about a brutal dictator. He sounds like a southern belle meeting suitors at a cotillion. My dear Beauregard, I fell in love with you after your beautiful letters. <laughs> I'm pretty sure most people hadn't even heard Soleimani's name until recently, and that includes Trump himself, who was asked about him in a radio interview in 2015 and clearly had no idea who he was. Are you familiar with General Soleimani? Yes. I, I, go ahead. Give me a little... Go ahead. Tell me. It, well, he runs the Quds Forces. Yes, okay. Right. Do, do you expect him to be... I think the Kurds, by the way, have been horribly mistreated by us. No, no the not Kurds. the Kurds, the, the, the Quds forces, the Iranian Revolutionary Guards Quds yes. forces, the bad yes. guys. Right. Do you expect his behavior to change oh, as a result? I Kurds. I love, I love how Trump tried to pretend he knew who he was, even though he clearly didn't. Do you know General Soleimani? Yeah, no, I, I do. But I want to see if you know who he is. Clearly, this was a reckless act by an impulsive president who hasn't thought through any of the consequences, but a lot of people, including prominent Democrats, are also asking, why now? Why would a president who's facing an impeachment trial and mounting evidence of his guilt suddenly start a war with Iran as he heads into an election year? I wonder if 2011 to 2012 Donald Trump had anything to say about that when it came to President Obama. I say that he starts a war in Iran before the election, which will make it very hard for the Republican to win, okay? And I've said that, and I predicted that. He doesn't talk to anybody. He'll start a war. You know, lives would be wasted no. for no reason. I happen to think that the president is going to start a war with Iran. Uh, I think it'll be a short-term popular thing to do, and I think he's going to do that for political reasons. Our president will start a war with Iran because he has absolutely no ability to negotiate. He's weak and he's ineffective. So the only way he figures that he's going to get reelected, and as sure as you're sitting there, is to start a war with Iran. I believe 
that he will attack Iran sometime prior to the election, because he thinks that's the only way he can get elected. Isn't it pathetic? Yes, it is. The thing about Trump is that he never tells the truth about himself in the present, but he always tells the truth about himself like 10 years in advance. When he accuses people of crossing the border illegally, that means 10 years from now he's going to get caught climbing over his wall trying to flee to Mexico. Damn it! Oh, why'd we make it so tall? So it's already terrifying that the president is impulsively lurching into an unjust and immoral war. And then on Sunday, he decided to go even further and threaten war crimes against Iran with a truly psychotic tweet that he genuinely thought counted as some sort of official legal document. Here is the very real tweet the president of the United States sent out on Sunday. These media posts will serve as notification to the United States Congress that should Iran strike any U.S. person or target, the United States will quickly and fully strike back and perhaps in a disproportionate manner. Such legal notice is not required, but is given nevertheless. That's right. The same guy who brought you such tweets as Robert Pattinson should dump Kristen Stewart, and I have never seen a thin person drinking Diet Coke, now thinks his tweets serve as official legal notice to Congress. I don't think... This tweet counts as legal notice to commit an act of war, but I do think it counts as legal notice to have you committed. That tweet sounds like something that could be scrawled on the walls of a psych ward. Let this serve as a legal notice that I know you're hiding pills in my applesauce, and I will find them and sue you for malpractice. And by the way, threatening a disproportionate response is a war crime, just like when Trump tweeted the previous day that if Iran strikes any Americans or American assets, we have targeted 52 Iranian sites, some at a very high level and important to Iran and the Iranian culture. And those targets and Iran itself will be hit very fast and very hard. First of all, it's not reassuring when the president tweets in all caps like a lunatic who sees his ex-girlfriend posting photos of herself with another guy and texts her at 3 a.m., who is Brad and why are you in Cabo? I will hit him very fast <laughs> and very hard. A war with Iran would be unjust and immoral, cause mass death and suffering, and destabilize the region and the world. And Trump obviously hasn't thought about or doesn't care about those consequences because, by all accounts, he made this decision impulsively to the surprise of his own top military officials. The New York Times reported that they were stunned, flabbergasted, and alarmed when Trump chose the option of killing Soleimani. Apparently, Trump's military advisors put the option on one PowerPoint slide to make the other option seem more reasonable, not actually thinking he would pick it. One briefing slide shown to Trump listed several follow-up steps the U.S. could take, among them targeting Soleimani. Unexpectedly, Trump chose that option. Oh, oh did Donald Trump do the unexpected <laughs> instead of the reasonable? Did you guys not get a briefing on him? You can't expect the reasonable choice from the guy who stared into an eclipse <laughs> and when his umbrella got caught, just left it on the stairs. Congress must do everything in its power to stop an unjust and immoral war with Iran that will have disastrous consequences. That's why thousands of protesters took to the streets over the weekend in cities across the country to say no to war with Iran. We have an impulsive, lawless president threatening war crimes who thinks his tweets count as official legal documents. You gotta ask... Isn't it pathetic? This has been A Closer Look.